Welcome back to our studio here in Leipzig. We have seen a lot of great matches, and now it's time for our final talk of the day. Uh, Professor Tursch is back at the studio. He will help us moderate this talk. And uh, I would like um, to say some words about our speaker, Mr. Ilya Kensig from VfL Bochum, <laughs> just to name a few clubs where he has been in his career path, Bayer Leverkusen, Hannover 96, Grasshoppers, is in Young Boys, and of course, VfL Bochum, which less than two weeks ago won the second Bundesliga, the second German Bundesliga tournament, and will be playing next year in the first German Bundesliga. Okay, thank you very much. So it's a pleasure for us to have you here, Mr. Kensig, at HHL in this uh, digital tournament this year. So, um, and I remember uh, as we talked about um, the first and second Bundesliga, I was one or two years ago, and I said to you, okay, VfL Bochum is uh, one club that has to be part of the first division, and it's uh, it's just. Um, um, yeah, a, a wish that comes true in the end for the whole region and the rural area that VfL Bochum is after, I guess, 11 years is back on track. And uh, another club in the same uh, colors is, is uh, went down. So it's, an, it's a great opportunity. And now we are yeah, just curious about your presentation with the uh, dealing with the success factors in professional football and the next level of VfL Bochum. So the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Professor Zürich. Thank you for the invitation and the chance uh, to share with you the winning strategy of VfL Bochum. And uh, it's really a great pleasure and uh, also an honor to speak to you today. And uh, as you said, uh, the moment couldn't be better as our uh, promotion uh, to Bundesliga was a major milestone. And uh, But even if we would have missed uh, this uh, promotion, um, the strategy I will introduce uh, to you today um, is uh, really set in stone. and. Uh, we believe uh, in the defined uh, success factors therein. We believe also that uh, you can program success in football. Um, you just cannot time it. So luck is also, of course, an important factor. And uh, my uh, favorite example in this regard is uh, Leeds United. It took them 16 years uh, to get back to the, the Premier League. And now it feels like they have never been away. And uh, Valve Bochum spent 11 years, uh, consecutive years, uh, in the second Bundesliga, and we hope the feeling will be the same as in case uh, of Leeds. And uh, so I have uh, prepared something for you, and I hope we can on the screen, and uh, you will see now my presentation. Right, so, well, um, we called our strategy, which um, was introduced in March uh, 2018, uh, the next chapter, because uh, the current management has the honor and the responsibility to add another chapter uh, to the history book uh, of the club, um, nothing more and nothing less. It's our mission that the uh, content uh, of this chapter is particularly exciting and and, and that it stands out um, in the long and rich past of the club. Before we started uh, to realize our strategy, we had to make uh, ourselves sure um, of the following. There is no truth uh, in football, only opinions. And uh, that is what makes football business so specific. The many opinions cause a permanent noise in football, and you have to try not to listen to it. Instead, stick to your strategy in good as well as in bad times. Otherwise, you end up micromanaging instead of, of leading. This slide actually was produced in uh, winter 2018, uh, long before we spoke about uh, breakaway leagues. Um, we were afraid at that time that a new football was about to replace the game we love. We see consumption and happiness uh, replacing the sporting competition, which used to be more important than life and death, as uh, Liverpool legend Bill Shankly said many decades ago. We see clients uh, instead of cheering and suffering fans. The players are behaving like pop stars. Match days at the stadium begin resembling trips to an amusement park, and we ask ourselves, 
is football at the very top becoming some kind of circus? Are the elite clubs turning into a modern version of the Harlem Globetrotters? And is football becoming Netflix? There are two standpoints uh, in football, the commercial and the emotional one. And uh, if everything becomes commercial, the real football fan switches off. The chief executive of uh, Italian powerhouse and champions Inter Milan, Giuseppe Marotta, said that um, uh, football is broken and needs uh, reform if it wants to survive. Well, I don't agree because maybe it is uh, Mr. Marotta's football which is broken as uh, Inter needed a US private equity fund to save the club uh, with the hundreds of millions of dollars from bankruptcy. Maybe it's the football which is part of the entertainment industry which needs to be fixed because our football shall remain the people sport. There is some feeling of uh, nostalgia of a time when football was more honest, down to earth, without too much glamour, without globalization, uh, without the endless chatter about always bigger, always more. A time when it was about football, not the things happening around it. And the DFL, the German Football League, it's selling its football across the world uh, with the slogan football as it's meant to be. And uh, I say, there you go, there you go. You know, VfL Bochum is uh, still number 13 in the internal ranking uh, of the Bundesliga. We have 13 million sympathizers uh, all over Germany. Uh, Bochum is the seventh most popular club in Germany. And uh, so uh, VfL Bochum um, must have done something right in the last couple uh, of decades. And uh, our mission is to learn the lessons from this past and uh, transform the findings uh, to the present and uh, further on to the future. And in front of this backdrop, our leitmotif uh, was born, tradition and innovation. Our goals, um, we have uh, three goals uh, clearly defined. Um, top 25, uh, that means qualifying in sporting and economic uh, terms uh, to, the, to the best. And uh, this is a huge challenge. And uh, actually some fans misunderstood it uh, for, a, for a season goal, but it's a, a clear long-term plan. And if in 10 years people say Fauvel Bochum is one of the top 25 clubs, in Germany, then we did extremely well, in my opinion, especially considering that our budget always was and unfortunately always will be just average. Staying uh, fan centric uh, means we not only want the primacy of uh, sporting success, uh, but also of uh, social values. Concretely, safeguarding um, of the match day experience as a real community experience, the club acting as an ambassador and a supporter of social projects and institutions, but also as a driver of uh, local jobs and business, and developing local talent um, as idols uh, for the people of Bochum. Um, profitability, the third goal that has uh, nothing to do uh, with an investor, so uh, you're not mixing it up, but uh, only if we are profitable, we can guarantee sustainability in what we do and uh, can we remain economically independent, uh, even in the case uh, of uh, the arrival of an external investor. Still, we can add here that the goal is also to, to increase the, the enterprise value, of course. To achieve our goals, uh, three steps are necessary, just three steps, but um, they are, uh, are not just, well, the, the steps actually are simple, but uh, they, are, uh, they go deep. And uh, the ultimate goal is to start uh, a positive cycle with step one um, is to do the simple things uh, really well. Um, you, in football, you already beat 90% um, of the competition uh, by doing so. 
some clubs um, want to qualify for, for Champions League, but they fail in uh, offering their fans uh, clean toilets at the stadium. So it's about uh, minimizing errors. It's about optimizing processes. And uh, that's how it all starts. Then uh, step two is to increase uh, the turnover. For this, we devised um, Vision 35 Plus is uh, our long-term economic growth plan and there it's about benchmarking our own position uh, in the so-called football food chain it's about developing new business models and projects and it's about increasing efficiency by adapting the organizational chart the internal redistribution of resources and the further development of employee satisfaction and uh, Promotion to the Bundesliga, as uh, as it happened now, will elevate and quicken uh, this uh, this cycle. But as I said, a potential investor, uh, external investor, we can also elevate and quicken this cycle. Um, the the investment goals uh, we set out for this case uh, have been well thought out. We want smart goals instead of putting all our chips on on just sporting success by increasing the first team wage budget something we we see actually regularly in football so we identified four areas we would like to fund with between a half and one million euros per season in case of an investment we want to increase um, sporting squad uh, predictability by keeping the player wage bill stable we don't want to increase it we want just to keep it stable as um, it otherwise normally varies depending on the tv money and the tv ranking um, in the league we want to create room for transfer investments in order to sign players which not only pay sporting uh, dividends but also generate uh, a return on investment later the VfL Bochum Academy is one of the most uh, efficient uh, academies uh, in the country, but uh, but sometimes you need uh, some extra money. Uh, an example to extend the contract with a talented youth player, not only uh, by three years, uh, just but let's say by four years, and uh, th that extra year then later on can be worth millions. But you need uh, you need uh, some uh, some resources uh, to. Um, achieve uh, this uh, this success at the negotiation table, also at at youth level. And last but not least, uh, we want uh, we need startup financing actually for our projects within the context of our long term uh, economic growth plan vision 35 plus, and um, all the money flowing in um, contrary uh, to club acquisitions abroad, where the purchase flies uh, price flows. Uh, from the pockets of the buyer into the pockets of the the seller in germany with its uh, member clubs the money stays in the club and it can be used immediately to uh, to develop uh, the asset so the prerequisites uh, so how do we achieve uh, the the continuity uh, tradition and innovation you heard uh, before um, let's start with the continuity. How we are, how are we ensuring it? Um, continuity is uh, the most important uh, success factor. Achieving it is probably the biggest challenge in uh, today's uh, modern uh, football. You need clear structures. Um, this creates trust, and uh, once uh, people start to trust you, uh, there is calm uh, in and around the club. And in a calm environment, you can start developing a winning mentality. And uh, from that come, uh, will come the results and uh, will come a continuity. Uh, and um, this uh, counts for both on and, and off the pitch. And uh, this, of course, this, uh, is very hard work. Um, all stakeholders have to get involved in a regular and uh, open dialogue about the club development or the club's uh, strategy. And uh, all stakeholders have to find themselves in this uh, next chapter we are writing. Uh, and to balance different interests and finding the lowest uh, common denominator is a, is a huge task uh, in football these days. So what about the, the traditions then? 
You know, our former uh, uh, coach uh, Robin Dutt uh, once said, uh, "Bochum is a, is a, is wonderfully normal. You feel the employees are down to earth, uh, like the players and the fans." Um, VfL Bochum is an honest club from a on, from an honest city. There is no risk of uh, of wannabe stars who could poison the climate, because the club only functions if everybody stands together. And uh, how are we? And how are we innovating? Um, last but not least, um, innovation means to optimize, to buy cheap, to manage successfully, to save costs, um, to be creative, uh, to do maybe things which nobody did before, but uh, also and especially in football to copy smart. And by innovating, we we create appeal. Thanks to our cooperation uh, with the uh, famous Ruhr University or with the city of Bochum within their framework um, of uh, within the framework of their visionary Bochum strategy for the future, or in our academy where players know that they are well advised to stay at VfL Bochum to take the next step in their career, or in connection with our transfer strategy. Uh, with VfL Bochum as a stepping stone for players uh, before they join bigger and uh, richer clubs. And um, yeah, consistency, um, reliability and uh, confidence in uh, one's own strength. This is uh, the most remarkable performance uh, of VfL Bochum and uh, in this connection, the most valuable trait of the club um, it's consistency, reliability, and the confidence in one's own strengths, as said. So that concludes my short presentation, and um, I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for your presentation, Mr. Kensich. And I guess we are, yeah, we're now here. Um, so maybe um, a first question from my side, and then I, I hand over to the to the stream and the people in it in the in the stream. So uh, if you want to uh, put it in a nutshell, what do you think was the reason that for Bochum after ten years um, was promoted to the first division? Because this development uh, or your development is is totally different uh, because a traditional club. Uh, is now promoted, and when we see at the when we look at the first division, uh, we realize that or recognize that uh, Schalke 04, Werder Bremen, and um, 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 FC uh, Cologne, um, not Cologne uh, yet, but maybe in the in the near um, future, uh, we don't hope that um, um, were relegated. What well, what is the difference? You said that, but what was the reason to put it in a nutshell? I think it's continuity and uh, it's uh, easier said than done. Um, I mean, it's the, the biggest challenge in, in modern football. And uh, if you have a look at the standings and the rankings uh, in all European leagues, first and second division, and uh, you, will, um, you will easily spot the clubs uh, um, where you have a continuity and uh, in clubs uh, where this is lacking and uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a trend that maybe at the very top of course money matters and uh, you need money to be successful but the the further down you go the less uh, money uh, is uh, has the biggest impact and uh, even uh, you look at the teams relegated or teams promoted um, in the last couple of years often you had a uh, teams with enough resources uh, to be successful going down and teams with little resources uh, going up. And uh, I think uh, that comes from the fact that without continuity, without calm, without trust, without clear structures, uh, you are going nowhere in football these days. Uh, and I, I said it at the very beginning, uh, there's, a, there's a permanent noise in football. And uh, if you don't have the stakeholders behind you, and if you don't work with the stakeholders and they and 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 get them on the same page and and and, and make them move in the same direction, even if it's maybe a very broad uh, road, but uh, from politicians to the to the ultra fans, uh, if 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 you don't achieve this, um, you're you're going nowhere. And I think we started this from from the day one, and uh, the 
trend in that regard was positive. It was positive on the pitch, although we had uh, the amplitude was was quite big uh, of uh, of successful years or successful periods and, and less. Uh, but off the pitch, we saw clear development, positive tendency, um, and. Uh, in the end, yeah, of course, it's not only continuity, tradition, innovation, it's also luck. In the end, uh, um, yeah, you need also some luck. Uh, and, and, and we had all of this this season and, uh, and, uh, and made it, yeah. But, but without continuity, you won't have any success anywhere. Thanks. Right. So um, I will now start reading some questions from our chat. And the first one, it's actually regarding a very hot topic in the football world. Uh, our previous speaker also stated what he thinks about it. The question is, what do you think about the Superliga? Or the failed Superliga in this case? Well, there are many different angles. I think what, 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 what shocked or surprised everybody is how it was handled, first of all. I think... Uh, uh, how you can uh, misunderstand or, or, or wrongly rate uh, the potential reactions, the mood of the fans, and, and uh, that was yeah, shocking. Even you know uh, that uh, you can get it uh, so wrong because it ended in a disaster, and um, I think the effect will will stay on. And but but in the end, the new Champions League uh, it moves towards uh, some kind of, of Super League anyway and I think the elite clubs uh, one day they will play among themselves and I said in my presentation it's it's reality and uh, um, but I don't think it will do harm uh, to football because there's a market for elite football for uh, you know some uh, some kind of a FIFA football uh, it's all clean it's it's all well rounded uh, has no edges uh, it's just the top stars and uh, and and there are people who like this kind of, of football this this is entertainment you know it's uh, the best playing uh, the best on a regular basis but uh, our football is different and uh, we don't need the elite clubs and i think some leagues actually would be better off uh, if if the top clubs would, would would leave let them go let them go the championship would maybe become more interesting more balanced uh, there would be more competition at the top and uh, and in the end you know uh, I said this this lowest denominator. You don't have it in in, in France if you have Paris with a with a with a turnover of the, of, of six seven hundred million pre-corona. Um, they have nothing to do with a club like Metz or Dijon. Um, and in the past, it was you know a special attraction when these big clubs came came to town. But it's it's not anymore these days. And I think. Uh, the, the the normal football clubs they could they could do well even without uh, the big ones and I'm afraid the big ones they will leave one day maybe not the German clubs I don't know about the English clubs but I think you will have some kind of of, of super league and um, yeah it, it's it's um, it's today's uh, reality you know thank you very much. So our next question is regarding the salary, the salary structure of professional footballers. What's your opinion about it? Uh, do you think there should be such a thing, a thing as a salary cap? Do you think these enormous salaries do they ruin football? Um, well, I think that the enormous salaries actually are justified because they are paid to the best players and they generate, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, revenues, uh, marketing revenues. I think the problem uh, actually. Uh, is uh, further down uh, mid table clubs or uh, small clubs paying too much and uh, we experienced that in the last couple of years in the second bundesliga it's, it's a, it has become a rat race for promotion and uh, all the clubs are chasing the same players and they are uh, they are um, risking you know they are uh, they are um, uh, willing to pay too much and uh, I think that is where uh, we need some kind of salary cap or luxury tax or whatever. But I think the the, the clubs uh, as competition and 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 then you know it has become a daily business. You need to win the next match, and uh, we have to stop clubs from taking uh, too many risks. Um, and uh, I think it's less a problem at the top level because you know the top stars uh, they will uh, they will. Uh, uh, they will generate return on investment, uh, but uh, mid mid table clubs, well, if they pay too much, uh, there is no return on investment, and uh, in the long run, uh, you suffer. So yeah, I think we need, and it's a good thing that 
that uh, uh, due to Corona, we are starting to talk about these things. You know, I, pre-Corona, nobody spoke about salary cap and, and uh, control and governance and transparency. So that is good for football. Thank you. And our final question for today, um, you presented us three goals in your presentation uh, some minutes ago. Uh, the question is, um, is there any conflict between uh, being fan-centric and being profitable? Like, uh, you need to give the fans what they want, but you also need to attract some investors. So well, how do you see this? Yeah, well, fan-centric, I think, means, uh, uh, first of all, the, the true values, I said, that you have... Uh, that, that, that uh, the stadium experience is a community experience, that you care about developing local talents, but because it means so much for the, for the people in, 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 your, in your hometown that you have uh, homegrown players, local, uh, locally developed players. Um, so the fans, actually, if we speak, and we speak regularly to them and uh, uh, you know, uh, communication is, is top priority in our club and nobody asks for wins, nobody asks to go crazy and, and, and overspend. Uh, it's absolutely contrary. They said, uh, be careful, uh, spend wisely and uh, uh, do not take any risk which could put the club in danger. So the fans, they, 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 they are not the ones asking uh, really to, um, to, put, uh, to shift into, into fifth gear. And I think profitable, a club like Bochum, uh, the smaller clubs, it's, it's mandatory to be profitable because um, only by being profitable, you, you remain independent. Uh, we have seen clubs uh, which are not profitable, you know, in the end it's uh, maybe an external investor who dictates, uh, um, who calls the shots and he uh, takes control of the club. And we don't want that. We are traditionalists, but we are open uh, for, uh, for uh, innovation, for uh, investments. We are open for an investor. But if you are profitable, then we uh, meet uh, on eye level uh, with that investor, and uh, we are not dependent, and we can uh, we can we can do a fair deal. Uh, if you are not profitable, you are always with the with the with the back to the wall. Uh, I mean, that's a huge problem. I think again, the further down you go, might not be a problem for Barcelona, but it is a, it could be a problem for for Bochum if we wouldn't be profitable. Thank you very much. And uh, really, now that we have a couple of minutes left, I would like to ask you the following question from, from our spectators. Um, it's a little bit more in the personal direction or regarding your preferences. If money wasn't a problem, right? Which player would you like to have in the team of VfL Bochum and why? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, as, uh, in favor of Bochum, you stop dreaming about having this or that player. Um, but I think uh, it's, uh, it's, it's classic. Uh, if you want to be successful in our realities, I think uh, uh, you need a good, uh, good goalkeeper. We have that. You need a striker scoring a lot of goals. We have that. You need uh, strong defenders. We have that. You need homegrown players. We have that. So... I think in the end, it's uh, at our level, uh, it's more the mentality uh, and less the individual quality. And um, so, in that regard, uh, in that regards, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't name uh, a specific player. And uh, besides that, I think uh, he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't join our club anyway. <laughs> Maybe that's more for a question. Uh, coming from uh, from FIFA, from the game, you know, <laughs> so it's maybe not, not uh, cannot answer it in reality. Hey, Mr. Kensich, uh, um, um, yeah, I'm very, very, um, we are very happy to have you here and uh, your um, um, presentation. It, it was uh, interesting to see how uh, Fafel Bochum has managed and will manage the first uh, division. And um, the best luck from Leipzig to Bochum. And we hope the next level will first division, first Bundesliga, and this not for one year, for uh, a longer period than 10 or 12 or 15 years or more. Um, because we all know uh, VfL Bochum is unabsteigbar. And uh, we hope this will become true in the next future, in the near future. Thank you very much and have a nice day. And yeah, all the best. Same to you. Thank you for having me and uh, yeah, have a nice ending of your, your tournament. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you also from our side, Mr. Kensik. And now we are going to give it back to our commentary and uh, get ready for the finals. Okay. <laughs>